For over 25 years, Action Target has held here in Spanish Fort Canyon, our law enforcement training camp. And we have seven different instructors here giving seven different disciplines in firearms. The instructors we bring out and the variety of courses that we offer is unmatched. So my name is Brandon Wright. I'm a regional law enforcement manager with Smith & Wesson currently. I started law enforcement in 1998, DOD firearms tactics instructor, and I shoot professionally for Team Smith & Wesson. Again, I'm only measuring the time it takes to react and get out of the holster. Stand by. That was an A-zone hit too. So the class I'm teaching at Lefty for 2018 is an advanced pistol clinic. We focus on sight pictures, acceptable sight pictures, and trigger pulls. They can apply them to anything, shooting behind cover, shooting around cars, shooting in through windshields, room entry, any type of situation that an officer would be faced with, these skills would be utilized. Hi, my name is Kyle Schmidt. I'm a full-time firearms instructor for the Tempe Police Department out in Arizona. I also, as a hobby, am a competitive shooter. I try to shoot multiple shooting sport disciplines. Then I try to take what I get from those different shooting disciplines and apply them to the law enforcement training, either here or at my home agency in Arizona. So one, high on the slide. Two, touch the trigger. Three, take the slack out. Four, I'm adding pressure to the gun fires. Bang, the gun fires. Five, six, I'm gonna reset the trigger and take the slack back out. So if it does not affect accuracy, since you guys all agreed that four is the only one that affects accuracy, at what speed should we do all those other steps? As fast as possible. As fast as possible, right? What's the benefit to doing it real slow? I'm teaching a class uh, mo mostly focused on competitive shooting. I've combined a couple different shooting disciplines. This year I'm taking each one of the shooting disciplines and I'm having the guys practice something about that shooting discipline because that's what I do to try to develop my skill. So it does two things. One, it helps them build general skill. Two, it gives them an, an introduction to the different types of shooting disciplines. Hopefully they can find something that's enjoyable for them, which will allow them to go out and do some additional skill development outside the everyday law enforcement training class. I'm Todd Heller, I'm with the Snowmass Village Police Department. I've been a firearms instructor for roughly 20 years. The class I teach here at uh, Let's See every year for Action Target is a reactive shooting class. Two on the body, then the plate. We talk about what our average uh, response time is to a certain stimulus and performing inside of that, that short time frame, which it's about a quarter of a second. So everything that we do is based upon those quarter second increments and what we can do inside of that time frame, with our largest tar target exposure being about three seconds. My name is Wes Goss. I am the uh, founder and owner of a company called Kyber Interactive Associates or Kyber Training. And I'm both law enforcement and military, 21 years in the US Army, retired out, and about 20 years with Mojave County Sheriff's Office, Mojave County, Arizona. Currently, I'm working as a reserve training officer with Alexandria PD. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Seven, 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 seven. Come on, get it, get it. Get up and fight twos, get up and fight twos, get up and fight twos. Get them both, get them both, get them both. Four, 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 get the other four, get the other four, get it thick, get it thick, one, 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 one. Kind of a condensed version of our counter ambush skills and tactics class or CAST. Some of the benefits of CAST that we're working with compromised shooting positions, trying to normalize those, trying to get uh, the presentation skills down under those adverse conditions, uh, up the officer's speed, uh, also up, up their, uh, their uh, situational awareness skills and also their management skills in and around a, an automobile, working, working to gain cover, uh, maximize the use of that cover, and then obviously the engagement skills against the bad guy. Rick Crawley here. I spent some time in the Marine Corps as a scout sniper team leader. Um, transitioning out, I transitioned right into law enforcement. From law enforcement, started my own company, Achilles Hill Tactical. So for ballistic protection on this vehicle, I want a low center of gravity. I want to come up. The first thing that comes up and is exposed to my threat is my muzzle and my optic. It comes up and I engage just like this. So I'm here training the Law Enforcement Patrol Rifle course. Uh, the course is based out of breaking the target shooter mindset. So the mindset is more of a combatives mindset. It's participant driven and it's very round intensive. These guys are coming to my course expecting to get a basic knowledge of you know, just a patrol rifle, but they're getting the whole experience. They're getting rifle, pistol, the dynamics of why we engage, the way we engage at close quarter distances or law enforcement distances. 
One, two, three. One, two, three. This is a speed engagement. He's coming at you. It needs to be quick. To the chest, one to the groin. Come on, I mean, anywhere in here, you're gonna crumble. Think of a cramp. You're gonna grab on, you're gonna stop. Ray Merlin from Team One Training, 26 year veteran of Kenosha Sheriff's Department and help out with Team One Training in the force on force and red man training gear. A lot of times when you're doing a force on force training or some kind of less legal training, they don't have the gear on where you can go through and strike or do things along those lines. So you're limited to verbalization, then deadly force and or the person giving up. What happens when that person has that weapon, wants to come at you, or they give up and are refusing to go down? You can go in there and do your knee strikes. You can conduct um, decentralizations, all safely with the red man training gear on. Force on force ammo, aluminum base. You can tell it's a training route. Goes into the conversion kits. We have different colors, so that this way you can have your different officers have different colors to know if they're on target. I'm Steve Horseman, and uh, I'm a retired police officer from Tempe, Arizona Police Department, where I did 27 years. The class I'm doing this year is Patrol Rifle Beyond the Basic. What we were trying to do is give the officers the confidence to hit targets beyond just the close in, 50 yards in, and in distance. So some of the things that we taught in there was I'm showing them how far the bullets will go and what the bullets do when they leave the barrel, for example. We do a little bit of um, information on ballistics. About 600 foot pounds of energy out of a seven inch barrel. A 300 blackout, a 110 grain bullet out of a nine inch barrel, it was almost 1200 foot pounds of energy. Okay, so if you want a shorty little compact gun to use as an entry weapon, okay, the 300 blackout in the non subsonic stuff is the way to go. It's got twice the energy as a 556, okay, and the energy is what stops the bad guys, it's not the velocity. <laughs> So this is my fourth year attending uh, Letsy, uh, and I look forward to coming back uh, each and every year. Why is that? It's a challenging training, not only uh, individually as a, as a shooter, but also challenging uh, as an instructor and, and gives me a lot of classes, a lot of drills to be able to take back to my agency. The value that you can get here is, you know, I think, you know, it's really worth it. I brought uh, 11 South Korean, South Korean professionals including special forces and SWAT. Let's see is, you know, I think it, this is one of the best course that you can actually do. You can even do something that you never done it before. We uh, feel really welcome here and we would like to come back here next year. Let's see, is each Wednesday night, we have our Corey Ride Memorial match. Corey Ride was a fallen Utah County officer that we honor with this match. It's a competition where we combine our latest technology, our auto targets this year, as well as our, uh, our best known steel targets. It's a competition, people come out. We've altered the format a few times. Uh, this year we're shooting uh, pistols and rifles, so they're transitioning uh, between the two. It's a great opportunity to come out and see how you stack up against shooters from around the world. This year's grand prize is a Springfield Armory Saint. As a whole, I mean, I, I was kind of expecting a lot of good things. It just kind of exceeded all my expectations at that. Having done other classes where they concentrate on one subject matter for two or three days, the opportunity to do four different classes, whether it be pistol, carbine, or a combination, vehicle tactics, it is definitely the place to come.